Hey, welcome back to Outbuilding. Thanks for checking in. And if you are a subscriber, thanks for coming back. Uh, today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about a, a hydraulic top link. There's a bunch of these available online. Um, there's a, most commonly pe people are talking about a, a Amazon place you can order them, which is coming, I think, from Holland actually. And they, I've heard really good things about them um, in reading about them. But I found one at Summit Hydraulics. They have a kit that is the top link and the hoses and the other things that you need. So I'm gonna go through putting that together and setting it up on this. Okay, with a three-point hitch, you've got your tractor here and you've got your implement here and you use the top link and you can adjust the pitch of the, um, if you wanna call it that, the pitch of the implement using that top link length. And usually a lot of things just wanna be level or they wanna be at a set pitch. Then when you use your, your three-point hitch to lift or you know drop that implement, it's gonna stay parallel to whatever the setting was, which is great, that's, that's what you want in a lot of cases. If you've got a brush hog, if you've got a flail, you want to, you, know, you may have set up the pitch so that it's tracking where you want it, and then as you raise and lower it, it sits where it should, that's great. With a, with a hydraulic top link, you can adjust the pitch on the fly. So let's say I'm going through a dip and I need to lift my brush hog to be able to get through that dip as I drive through a dip. You can use the hydraulic top link to shorten that on the fly from your seat and track through that hole. Um, with a flail, you might want to, say, tilt it back so it's not cutting as aggressively, or you might want to tip it way down so that it's cutting more aggressively based on where your, your, ter you know, your terrain. So again, you can, you can adjust that while you're out driving. And then lastly, like with a box blade, as a, a box blade, if you, if you tilt it back, it won't cut as deeply and it'll kind of, it'll grade. And if you dip it down, it will dig and, and bury in. So a box blade or a, a grading shaper you, you can again use that, that, that hydraulic top link on the fly to refine that movement. So they're pretty useful and they're also just way easier to set things up. Probably one of the most important things about this is to get your top link measured out right. I've got this set up. This, this SA425, this Yanmar, has fairly long lower arms. And so the top link, when I've used my chipper and my flail and my other things, is almost at its max when I use it. In fact, in the case of the flail, it's at its max and the, and the flail could even pull back a little bit more. So here's the top link, the mechanical top link to measure it. A lot of people will just measure the absolute maximum, which in my case is 28 inches here. And then they'll spin it in and check. So then that's 18 inches. So it's 18 to 28 is what my the provided top link was. Problem is, is that's, and, and that you could try to match that, but it's probably better to look at when you have your implement set up, what is it, what is it sitting at when it's normally set up? If there's a range there and then try to hit the middle of that range when you order your top link so that you've got the best latitude to work within what your actually implements are using. Anyway, this is still useful. I can still use it when I don't, when I'm either using the second remote or um, have a fixed link that I need. So this is my chipper on here, and it it is sort of intermediate. It doesn't need as long a top link as some of the other implements I have, but to give you an example, this we measured this thing at 18 and 28 inches, the, the top link that's in here now, the fixed top link. And when I measure what I'm sitting at, I'm measuring just over 25 inches. So right now, this top link is three inches from its maximum, which means I have a little bit of, little bit of work. And, then, and I've got different holes up here which I can make some, adjust, some adjustments with in terms of the top link length. But in general, this top link, because I have longer lower arms, is a little bit short. So I went with a slightly longer top link when I ordered it from Summit. So to install this, first thing I'm gonna do is just pull off my old mechanical top link. And I'll keep this around. I've, there's, there's good cases for using this, and I may also need that hydraulic function for something else other days but I'll pull this, uh, this, hop, this top link out. And here's the summit top link. So it has a check valve in, this, in the box here. That check valve will keep it from moving up or down. So it'll, it'll, it'll hold its setting, whatever you've got, and only use hydraulic pressure to change it. That may be really useful and it'll keep it kind of as a fixed component. It will, could possibly leak down a little bit over time, but um, that's kind of nice. You can also remove the check valve. So if you want it to float and use your float function on your rear remote, you can so that you can let it track as you go. Um, the, I'll, I'll attach my hydraulic fittings here. The fixed end of the cylinder, the part that's, that doesn't slide is, is 
gonna, I'm going to put next to the tractor, and that's just on reading. That way you're not stretching your hoses out as you extend it and, and shorten it. And then the piston end is on this end, and I'll, and I'll use that. And I'll use the hydraulics to open it up. But first I'll get this thing set in there. So the end of these hoses that they provide, they've got the same fitting on both ends, has a, a tapered cone inside. So I'm gonna match that on the other side, actually, yeah. Yeah, so I'll match that on the other side and tighten them up. They say not to use any pipe dope. I'm gonna just put a little tiny bit of pipe dope, pipe dope on the threads, just kind of for belt and braces, but um, not a not whole lot. And then they give you sort of a Lego set of fittings here. So. The first one's got an O-ring and a, a straight thread that goes into the hydraulic cylinder. And then you go with those cones and I'm going to go right angle out of the um, hydraulic body through the hose to sort of a 45 to an adapter that gets me up to something to my ISO B. And then there was a couple spare pieces that I don't use, so I won't use these two. And then they include some caps here. And like I said, it was nice that they were able to give me the, the, the proper hydraulic fitting for my rear remote. Remember to just cycle out your hydraulics to get, make sure there's no pressure in there so that when you're pushing the fitting on, doesn't, you're not put fighting that. This first one has the O-ring to create the seal because that has an O-ring. It doesn't need to be super tight. Okay, the next fitting in this Lego set is the right angle and that I can use to kind of get my hoses um, turning and getting coming out of the way. And reading the instructions, again, they said not to use that piped up, so I'm going to go ahead and adhere to the instructions and not use it, and I'll see if these leak at all. Without any dope on there, I do want to get these plenty tight. Might be better to tighten these up once I get everything kind of half assembled. Already got those routed, and then Summit includes a wad of uh, zip ties in there, so I'll just zip tie this up so that it stay in put when I'm uh, when things are moving around. All right, so this may not show, but my, my sight glass for my hydraulic fluid is right back in here by the PTO, and it's, it's showing right at the line right now, which means it's got just enough hydra hydraulic fluid as it should. It's about five gallons. Since I'm adding a new cylinder, it's going to take up a little bit of that hydraulic fluid when I, when I first use it. So I'll check this after I've used it and see if that moved um, appreciably. And if it did, I'll need to add a little bit in there to get it back up to the level. All right, all that remains to do now is to hook it up to my hydraulics. This, on my, I've got a little diagram here on my second channel here has the float, so I'll use that one. And even though I won't be using the float now, I'll just get in the habit of using that. And, and like with any hydraulic thing, I've got my safety glasses on and I'm wearing gloves because if it should, there should be a leak, it's gonna be a high pressure leak and can be pretty dangerous to get into, into your skin. So I'm uh, just being careful. There we go. So now I can fire up the tractor and check for leaks and give it a try. Um, when I'm going to check for leaks, I'm going to use a piece of cardboard and move around again for that high pressure um, 
concern of the potential leak in a hydraulic first time around. So I'll use a piece of cardboard and just kind of go around each joint and make sure it's not hitting anything as I start it up. That all looks good. So I can try my cylinder a little bit. There it goes. All right, so this is interesting. I, I did, I checked the hydraulic fluid before and it was right in the center of my sight glass. Now it's kind of low. So it really does beg the question of whether I should add a little bit of hydraulic fluid. I'm gonna run it a little bit on the tractor and see if it doesn't cir circulate a little bit, but it definitely is a little bit low. So I, I'll probably get some hydraulic fluid, have it on hand and top that back up so that that sight glass is, is nearly full. And you know, I've got a backhoe, I've got a cylinder on my flail and I've got the hydraulic top link here, all of those have taken some of the hydraulic fluid out of the tractor as they've been hooked up and then they they retain that while you're well while the track while they're sitting idle. And so my hydraulic fluid has been dispersed a little bit. It's good to know that. One other thing to note here is I have a, um, a power and beyond so that the, 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 the flow for the backhoe comes out of this tube and is fed back into the circuit here. And this this hose disconnects you know to hook up to the backhoe or reconnects when you're not using the backhoe. Right now it is, it's it's not going to interfere with the hydraulic top link, but it was sitting below and the hydraulic top link is a lot thicker than the old one was and it was sitting below and it's going to just make sure your hydraulic top link as it moves around and cycles isn't going to pinch or um, bind any hose or wiring back here just because it is a little bit bigger, but it should work just fine for what I'm doing and if it ever gets in the way like when I'm not when I'm using the backhoe, I can take you know I can remove. I won't have the hydraulic top link on here, so it's not an issue. Just something to think about. All right, well that's a pretty quick video on the, the hydraulic top link. These are I think relatively common. Other people have done good videos too, but um, this will be really useful for me. And it's one of the attachments, the, uh, attachment attachment essentially that um, will make things much more easy and also just let me be a little bit more refined when I'm using my landscaping grader on slopey things and also the flail to adjust the, the height of that and my, my, my cut height if you will on the fly. Anyway thanks for watching if you haven't please subscribe and if you have I really appreciate you coming back and watching those videos they're a lot of fun to put together. Take care and until I see you next we'll be out building. <laughs>